In this lesson, you're going to learn how to graph polynomials using n behavior, zeros, and multiplicities. We're going to go through three examples so you can understand how to work with this concept. The first one we have y equals 2 times x minus 2, x plus 3, x minus 4. Now this one's already in factored form. And the first thing you want to do is you want to find the zeros. And to find the zeros, what you do is you take each of these groups, each of these factors, and you set them equal to zero. Now, if it's not factored, if you can, go ahead and try and factor it. And we'll do that in the next example. So here you just make like a mini equation, x minus two equals zero, x plus three equals zero, and x minus four equals zero. And when you solve these, you can see you're getting x equals two, which means it's gonna cross the x-axis right here at two. Over here, when you subtract three from both sides, you get x equals negative three, so it's crossing here. And then when you solve this last one, x equals four, that gives us another x-intercept, or what's referred to as a zero. Now they call it a zero because the y-coordinate is zero. Basically, when you put in x equals four, it's gonna make all this zero. That's why the y-value is zero, we call it a zero. Now, the next thing you wanna look at is, does the graph go up to the right or down to the right? Does it go up to the left or down to the left? That's what it's referred to as the end behavior, meaning what happens at the ends of the graph, the left end and the right end. And the way that you determine that is by this leading coefficient. Now, the leading coefficient, if it's positive, that means it's gonna go up towards positive infinity. So I'm just gonna draw an arrow going up to the right. If this was a negative, it's gonna be going down towards negative infinity. Now, if you're not sure, and you just wanna test it out, you could put in a number, say for example, like 10. So meaning you're going way over here to the right. If you put 10 in, you're gonna see that you're gonna get a large positive number, and that tells you it's going up. But this is what's referred to as the leading coefficient test, okay, or n behavior. Now, the next thing you wanna analyze is, is the graph going up to the left or down to the left? And the way you do that is you wanna look at the degree of the polynomial. What I mean by that is if you were to multiply this out, you don't have to multiply it out. You can see it's x times x times x, which gives you x cubed. And when it's an odd degree, the end behavior, left and right, is gonna be opposite. Meaning if this goes up, this goes down. If this were to go down to the right, then it would go up to the left. And the way you can remember that also is if you're familiar with the graph y equals x cubed, See how it's going up to the right and down to the left over here. If this was like a negative x cubed, it would go down to the right. See that leading coefficient's negative one, but because it's an odd degree, it's going the opposite direction uh, up to the left. Now, when you have an even degree, okay, even, like for example, x squared or x to the fourth, what do those graphs look like? They look like parabolas. So they're either gonna be both going up, or if I did, let's say I did a negative, then you can see they're both going down. So with its even degree, it's gonna have the same end behavior, meaning both up or both down. Odd, just remember opposite. O for odd, O for opposite. Easy to remember that way. Now the third thing we wanna pay attention to is the multiplicities. Multiplicities means like multiples, like duplicates, triplicates, like that. But you can see here, we, these did not occur more than once. We just had one four, one negative three, one two. When they occur just once like that, at these zeros, at these x-intercepts, it's gonna look like a line, okay? I Meaning it's gonna go straight through. What happens, Mario, if it, it occurs twice? Well, if it occurs twice, like it's a duplicate or a multiplicity of two, let's say, for example, at this point, this, let's say this was two and it was uh, occurred twice, like when you factor it and you set the factors to zero, then what it has is it has a parabola shape at that point. It's gonna essentially bounce off that point. If it was coming from this direction, it would bounce like that. What happens if it's a multiplicity of three? Well, then it's gonna look like x cubed. It's gonna have this x cubed shape, almost like it's gonna bounce and go the other direction, then it bends like that. So it looks like the graph y equals x cubed. What happens if it's x to the fourth? Well, remember, if it's even, this is an easy way to remember, if it's even, it's going to bounce, okay, or look like this parabola shape either like this or like this. If it's odd, like one, three, five, seven, it's gonna have the shape where it goes through, okay? And if you wanna get fancy, like when it's like x cubed or x to the fifth, it's gonna have that x cubed shape or x to the fifth shape as it, as it passes through that point. But just remember, odd it goes through, even it doesn't, it bounces. So now, the only other thing that you might be asking is you say, well, 
How did you know like not to go way up here and then way down here and then like that? Well, you're going to learn about that in calculus. You're going to learn about what you call the uh, extreme values, the maximums and the minimums, these turning points or these bends. But if you want to be more precise, you could pick some points in between these x-intercepts, these zeros. You could put like 3 in and see what you get for the y value, or you could maybe put like uh, you know, negative 1 or negative 2 in and see what you get for the y value and get a better sketch. But this is just a pretty good sketch. One key point that you might want to do is find the y-intercept. That's easy to find. You're just putting 0 in for x. So let's go ahead and do that on this one. That would give us negative 2, 3, and negative 4. So that comes out to negative 6 uh, times negative 4 is uh, 24 times 2 is 48. So I really should have gone up higher, but this point here is going to be the point 0, 48. And you have a pretty good sketch. Now let's go into some other examples to show you more about how to work with this. Okay, number 2, we've got y equals negative x cubed plus 3x squared. How do we get a good graph of that using zeros and n behavior and multiplicities? Well, the first thing you want to do, if you can, is you want to factor this. So what I notice is, is that I can factor out x squared, and because it starts with a negative, I'm going to factor out a negative x squared. So that's going to leave us with x minus 3. Now you can check your work if you distribute the negative x squared back in, we get back the original polynomial. The other thing you want to pay attention to when you're doing this is you want to make sure you write your polynomial in descending order. So from the highest power, all the way down to the lowest power. That's what standard form is, or descending order. Now we have it factored. We want to set these groups, or these factors, equal to zero. So let's make some equations here. Negative x squared equals zero, and x minus three equals zero. If we multiply both sides by negative one, that gives us x squared equals zero. If we take the square root, okay, we're just getting zero. But you see how this is x squared? That's like x times x. We're really getting x equals 0 twice. Okay, so I'm going to write this multiplicity of 2, meaning it occurs twice. This one, when I add 3 to both sides, I get x equals 3. This is only occurring once. So see, notice this is x squared. If I had like a 3 here, like x minus 3 cubed, then I would have 3 3 times. That would be like a multiplicity of 3. But this only occurs once here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot that on our x-axis. These are our zeros or our x-intercepts. We've got 0 and 3. Let's go to n behavior now. So do you think the graph is going to go up to the right or down to the right? What do you think? Well, if you said down to the right, you're absolutely right because it has that leading coefficient, which is negative. And then what about for the left hand behavior? Is it going up or down? Well, the degree, okay, when we talk about degree, that's the highest power here, which is a 3. That's odd. Remember, odd is opposite, so we're going up to the left. If it's even degree, like if this was x to the fourth, then these would be the same, either both down or both up. So now we have to look at the multiplicities. We said that 0 occurs twice. So here at x equals 0, it's good, because it occurs twice, it's going to look like a parabola, like x squared. Okay, so it's going to have this kind of a shape. Over here, x equals 3, this only has a multiplicity of 1. It just occurs once. That means this is going to just go straight through like a line. Okay, so the only thing is, you know, you might be saying, how did I not go all the way up here, right? Or how come I didn't just go like that? And again, this is just a rough sketch. You could plot some more points in between, you know, these uh, x-intercepts, okay, these zeros, and get an idea. And, you know, that would be good. But for this video, for right now, we're just talking about a basic sketch using those three components. Okay, number three. This one's got a little bit of everything in it, so it's a really good example. But before I dive into that one, if you're new to the channel and we're meeting for the first time, my name is Mario of Mario's Math Tutoring, and I tutor students every day uh, full-time. And basically what I try to do is take what I learn about what helps students the easiest, the quickest, the best in my tutoring sessions, and I bring it to these videos so that you can benefit from my tutoring as well. So the channel is all about making learning math less stressful so you can raise your grade, pass your class, and go on to pursue your dreams. So if this is something you're interested in, check out more math videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And let's dive into this last example now. The first thing we want to do, this one's all nicely factored for us, right? So let's look at the zeros. If we set the factors equal to zero, you can see we're going to get x plus 1 equals zero, which gives us negative 1. x minus 3 equals zero, which is going to give us 3. And then here, when we set this one to zero, we're going to get negative 2. But notice how this one has a multiplicity of 2. So I'm just going to put 
multiplicity of two, something like that. And this one has a multiplicity of three, so I'm just gonna say multiplicity three, something like that, just to kind of remind us when it, we go to graph it. So here you can see the x-intercepts, negative one, positive three, and negative two. Okay, now how about n behavior? Is the graph gonna go up to the right or down to the right? Leading coefficient's positive, so we know that's gonna go up to the right. Now what about the degree? Now the degree, you don't wanna foil all this out. I mean, you could, but it would take you a while. We can just look at these exponents. This is x to the first, x to the second, x to the third. When we multiply, what do we do to the exponents? We add them. Three plus two is five, plus one is six. So that means that this is a sixth degree, which is even, and when it's even, the end behavior to the right and the left is gonna be the same, either both up or both down. Okay, if it's odd, opposite, right? Now we get to the fun part, the shape of the graph. So here uh, at negative two, that has a multiplicity of three. So what that means is when this graph approaches negative two, it's gonna have that cubic shape, okay? If you want, you can draw it straight through, but if you wanna be a little bit, give it a little bit better sketch, it's gonna have that y equals x cube shape. At negative one, okay, this had a multiplicity of one, which means it's gonna go through this point like a line, kinda of just like straight through like that. It's not gonna bounce off, it's not gonna have that cubic shape, it's gonna be like a line. And then the last one at three, that has a multiplicity of two, which means that this is gonna have that x squared shape, like that parabola shape, at this point. Again, the only thing that's missing are picking some points maybe in between some of these zeros to get an idea about you know, how high up it goes or how low it goes. But this is a pretty good sketch of our graph. The things that we didn't cover in this video were Descartes' rule of signs, the rational root theorem or rational zero theorem for finding these zeros if you can't easily factor it. And I talk about those uh, things as well as the graphing it all together with what we did here in that video right there. So follow me over to that video right there where we dive into even more depth on graphing polynomials. I'll see you in that lesson.